Hey there, ecologists. Welcome back to Science Class. I'm Ms. Dobek, and today we are going to keep talking about ecosystems, all right? We are going to look closely at an ecosystem and see if we can figure out why it is or is not thriving and surviving. So before you get into this video, if you have not already done the warm-up, I want you to pause this video, head back to your classwork, and finish this warm-up. It is asking us if a student fills this jar with rocks, soil, and plants, and then the jar is sealed, the question it's asking is, are the plants going to live or die? I want you to think about that. If you haven't done this already, think about the three things we talked about last week that all plants and animals need to survive. Those three things are air, water, and food. Are the plants going to get all of those things if they make it in a jar and then seal it. Think about it. Then you're gonna look at this diagram below if you haven't already, see if you can figure out where the squid is getting its energy from, and if you can figure out what the fish eat. Now, if you've already done this, perfect. If not, pause this video and go finish your warm up now. All right, I want you to watch this clip this is called an ecosphere, okay? It's basically a small ecosystem inside of a glass bubble. I want you to watch this and think to yourself, how do the shrimp, there are some shrimp in these ecospheres, how do the shrimp get what they need to survive? Remember, the three things that it needs to survive are air, water, and food. I want you to watch this and see if you can figure out how do the shrimp get what they need to survive? All right, I want you to grab something to write with and on if you haven't already, and jot down just a couple ideas on how do you think that the shrimp get what they need to survive? Remember, to survive, a living thing needs air, water, and food. Obviously, the ecospheres have water in them, but how are the shrimp getting air and food? Think about that. If you need to pause the video to write it down, go ahead. We're gonna keep talking about ecosystems, right? So let's look at this ecosphere. It's a tiny ecosystem. In here, there's synthetic gravel, that means like fake rocks. There's algae, which is a type of plant. There's the live marine shrimp, those little shrimp that you saw, and it's made out of glass, all right? So this diagram, this scientific picture, is showing us the things that are inside this ecosystem, this ecosphere. I know that for the shrimp to live, they need air, water, and food. Think about this. Where do shrimp live in regular ecosystems? They live underwater. So these shrimp are able to get air through the water in the ecosphere. So they have air and water. They get food from the algae that's inside the ecosphere as well. So the shrimp are able to survive even though it's closed off with the algae for food, air in the water, and the water that's inside the ecosphere. Now, we are going to analyze data for a rainforest project site for our friends at the Natural Resources Rescue, which is an ecologist group. Remember, last week we talked about ecologists being scientists who studies ecosystem. So, to do this, we can set up a model ecosystem inside a terrarium, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that means and what that looks like for you at home. So, 
Ecologists, we talked about this last week, are scientists who study ecosystems. This year, we are going to be ecologists. So ecologists observe ecosystems and their parts in order to draw conclusions about them. Now, when it says observe, that means we are using our five senses to learn things about this ecosystem. Now, obviously, you're not going to taste an ecosystem, right? But we are going to look, we're going to listen, we're going to see, use our hands to figure out ecosystems and their parts. We're going to learn about a problem of an ecosystem in Costa Rica. Now, if we look at this map, here's Jacksonville, this little red dot right here, and Costa Rica is south of us towards the middle of the earth. So I want you to think if it is closer to the equator than us and it is down here in Central America, look at this ecosystem. What kind of ecosystem do you think it is and what living things or organisms do you think might live there? I want you to take about one minute um, and think about these questions. Write them down on your piece of paper that you got. What kind of ecosystem do you think this is? And what living things or organisms do you think might live here? I want you to pause this video and write down your ideas. All right, you should have written down what you think this ecosystem is. This is a rainforest. Look at where it is on the map and what it looks like here. There's a ton of plants, trees, there's a waterfall. It looks like a rainforest to me. Some things that you might have thought of that live there are these plants and these trees, uh, monkeys, um, birds, uh, frogs. There's a lot of different things that live in a rainforest, but we are going to focus on these organisms here. So, we see a jaguar, right? Go Jags. We see this jaguar here. They live in rainforests. A three-toed sloth, which is a very slow animal. This gross millipede here in this soil. Now remember that all living things, all organisms are included in an ecosystem. So we're even talking about this Cecropia tree here. All right, so even though it's not an animal, this Cecropia tree is still a living thing. It is part of this ecosystem that ecologists would study. Now, these are just some of the parts that make up the rainforest ecosystem in Costa Rica. How do you think these things might interact with each other? I want you to pause the video and jot down some notes. How do you think these things are connected to each other in an ecosystem? So we should be thinking about the tree being food for the sloth and the sloth being food for the jaguar. If you thought about how the soil and the millipede also interact with this ecosystem, you probably thought that the soil helps the tree grow. I don't know what this millipede does. Let's think about it and see if we can figure out some different ways that these might interact with each other. Now, earlier I said that we were gonna help this natural resources rescue to figure out why this ecosystem is not thriving. So basically what happened is there was this project area. This used to be a beautiful, luscious rainforest like we saw a couple slides ago. It pretty much looked like this, right? Gorgeous rainforest, living, thriving things. Well, Cattle farmers burned down the rainforest in order to find, or in order to make a grazing area for their cows. So they burnt down the rainforest, you can see these trees over here, to make grazing area for their cows. Well now, people are going back and trying to bring this rainforest back to life. We're calling this restoration, okay? Rainforest restoration. I want you to look at this, right? So this is a project report from the Natural Resources Rescue. The project was originally a healthy rainforest. Then on the left, the cattle ranchers burned down the rainforest so they could use the land for their grazing cows. What do you notice when you look at this today project area? Okay, let's think about that. Several years ago, it says the cattle ranchers left and took the cows with them. The ranchers were asked to plant trees so that the area would grow again. 
So they planted the Cecropia trees, but they're growing very slowly. Okay, so the Natural Resources Rescue brought in some volunteers to plant more Cecropia trees and other rainforest plants on the land that used to be a cow pasture. Um, they worked to plant these young Cecropia trees, but when we look at this, I want you to look at this data table and see if you can notice anything about the information, okay? This is the organism count in the project area that we were just looking at where they're planting these Cecropia trees. This is the organism count in a healthy rainforest. So a rainforest that's already established and healthy. Let's look at the difference. In the project area, there's one jaguar, but there are four in the healthy rainforest. In the project area, there are 16 three-toed sloths. There are 28 in the healthy rainforest. So 188 Cecropia trees in the project area, but 596 in a healthy rainforest. The land area is 100 square kilometers in both areas. So the reason that these numbers are not bigger is not because it's more land. So they showed us that the land area is exactly the same, but there is still less jaguars, three-toed sloths, and cecropia trees. All right, so I want you to jot down a couple notes about these numbers and what it's showing us about the two sites. All right, so. Our big chapter question is, why aren't the jaguars and sloths in the project site growing and thriving? And we are gonna talk more about that next week. But I wanna talk now a little bit about a terrarium. So a terrarium is basically a mini ecosystem, okay? Scientists, a lot of times, can't be in the ecosystem to make observations. So one way we can investigate the problem in the rainforest is by making observations of an ecosystem like ecologists do. We obviously cannot bring the rainforest to our classroom or to our houses, but we can make a terrarium, which is a small scale ecosystem. We are making some of those in class at KIPP. Because you're at home and you can't do this, you can either try to make a terrarium at home using a cup with some soil and some seeds, or when I am making videos for you at home, I will just let you know how our terrariums are doing. So today we planted some seeds in some soil in some cups. We used grass seeds in one cup and alfalfa seeds in another cup. We use nutrient rich soil in order to do this. Now, if those start growing, I will keep you updated on the terrariums at school. But this is just a picture of some different terrariums and what they could look like when they start growing. So you see these plants growing in the bottom, some moss and things like that, and then you see plants growing out of the top of them. So for somebody who is an ecologist who wants to study an ecosystem, this is a way that they can do it on a small scale. Now, I want you to keep thinking about those three-toed sloths, the cecropia trees, and the jaguars, and start wondering about why those things are not thriving at the project site. We're going to talk more about that next week. Make sure that you turn in your warm-up, and I will see you all later. Bye.